Glenn, it's the start of your second full season at Billericay Town. Um, you must be pretty satisfied with the way things have gone so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, as you said, this is the start of the second full season, yeah. We had the end of the season before. Uh, I said every day, Doc, we'd, um, every two years we'd get a promotion. It's worked so far. Um, I set targets. If you reach targets, I don't think that's acceptable. You have to excel and you have to beat your targets. So I might set targets that I, I believe are achievable, but I like to break them. So I don't want to go up in two years, I want to go up this year. Okay. And obviously, you know, last season there was a lot of razzmatazz around the club. It seems to have been a lot more structured this year in terms of the players you brought in and the way things have, the approach to the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, look, for me, it's very simple. Whenever I start a business, there's a word I use that I won't use now, but I, let's call it idiot tax. And I pay idiot tax, which is when you're learning a business, you pay too much money for certain things, you do things incorrectly, you learn by your mistakes. The biggest, the biggest lesson is your last mistake. As long as you accept that and you make the mistake and you learn the lesson, you move on. So for me, I've got twice as good a side as I had last year for, for a third of the money. No, half of the money. I've made every game we had last year a cup final for anyone we faced. So they raised the game 20%. People were beating us in league games to celebrate like they won the final. Um, and I created a lot of media frenzy, which was good for the club, but not so good for me personally, because it's, 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 it's ignited tax investigations. When I, when I offer a player money to leave, when other, play, other clubs just leave them out, I get accused of blackmail and some stuff that happened that really wasn't fair. And it made me ill, actually. I've, I've been to Thailand working on myself. I unfortunately to watch my granddad pass away, and I've been working on myself at the other time out there. So, um, I've learned a lot of lessons from what I'd done wrong last year. From players, to where I was in the change room, to where I was on social media, and I'm learning. I'm not perfect, but one thing I realised this year is we was going to go about our business quietly, well, and just, and just not slip under the radar, but certainly not create the, uh, the cup final that we did before. And you're obviously playing a lot of better teams this year at that level. Um, who do you see as your challenges? Well, look, we played Epsweet in a friendly the weekend. Um, Epsweet, for the first 30 minutes, ruled the game. We changed it around a little bit. I believe it was a good draw, a good, a good game. I believe we deserve to win it. Um, they're a full-time pro side. So any full-time pro side, I believe they're probably one of the favourites to go up. So we've already shown we can hold it at the level above. But at this level, you look at people like Torquay, full-time pro, great club, great I mean, they've got to be favourites, I would imagine. I haven't looked at the things, but I'd imagine they're favourites. Rod Stringer always has a very strong physical side. Chunks will be up there. Um, up, it's going to be, it's a very tough league. It's a very tough league. And, um, but Torquay and Torquay and Chunks will be the two I'd be watching. And you, you mentioned Chelmsford and Rod. Uh, there's a lot of local interest, though, in this division this year with you know yourselves and Chelmsford City, East Thurrock and, and Concord. That's got to be good for the region as well. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, of course it's good. And I mean, if you want to add a little razzmatazz to Concord, obviously we've got the thing, we've got Sammy Moore over there now. Um, he, he, him and his side put us out of the FA Cup quite... Um, they deserved the win and they've done well, but... So there's a, there's a bit of history there, and and um, I've had my clashes with the owner of, of Concord. Um, so there is a lot of interest, and in as you say, there's four big clubs now. I'm just humbled to say that what well, you're naming me amongst them clubs. I'm humbled for that. And obviously the the ambitions for for Glen Tamplin and Billericay Town this year. Well, Glen Tamplin's going in as assistant manager. Harry Wheeler is the manager. If I owned a theatre, I used to want to do the acting the lights, the music, everything. And I realise now I can't run the whole show. Harry Wheeler is a better manager than me. There's three or four people that Harry Wheeler believe I could get the best out of. Sammy Gillian, Jamie O'Hara, uh, Tam that's just come in, Connor Hunt that's just come in. There's four or five people that I would get more out of than the way I deal with them. Um, and through my experiences of my darkness and stuff. And um, so Harry's husband's coming to an assistant because he thinks I've got a team up for it. <clears throat> Rather than being a sledgehammer, I was a sledgehammer. I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna be a, a feather boa and I'm going to cuddle them and tickle them when they need it and just give them some inspiration. And when they're down is when I'll be there for them rather than keep them. That's what I learned from being in the change room. 
because I'm so aggressive and I'm so now, now, now. Um, some of them players didn't react well to that last year. And the best thing I've done was leave the dressing room, stay out of the dressing room and let them win the league. The hardest thing I've done. I couldn't even get, I couldn't even go and watch the game we won the league because it was hurting too much watching from the stands. But I've always said, the saying about Glenn Tampin, it's about Billy Ricky FC. And hopefully, people realise how much I proved that last year. And I stepped down to probably the best job I enjoyed doing in my, my life for the interest of the club. So now I can go back in there learning my lesson. Mm -hmm. And obviously, just finally, it's exciting times for Billericay Town fans. What's your message for them? My message for them is the last game of the season was unbelievable. You was all there. You come out, I think we had 1,900, 2,000 there. Um, we have to get more fans. I've said it all along. So far, I've done everything I've said and more. Um, literally, if you all bring one person, you make us 3,000. We've got to get to three or four thousand. If you want to get to League Two, like I want to get to League Two, you need to get us more fans. I can't do no more. So please bring a friend who brings a friend. Get us to three, four, five thousand fans. People laugh at me going, you won't get that at non-league. So I would say to you, please, look, if you want to go to Division Two, I'll take us there. But the finances that are needed, we need the crowds to grow. That's how you get to it. It's a business plan. How do we get there? We get there with bigger crowds. You get the crowds, I'll get us up the leads. You do your bit, BFC fans, do your bit, and I'll do mine. And the other thing I'd say, your songs, it is Harry Weed's Blue and White Army. And I love the song you sing me. I love the song you sing me. I keep singing it myself. I keep singing that song, but change it to, he's taking us to the conference, so he's taking us to League Two, because I'm going to take you to League Two. Hey, Glenn Tamplin, thanks very much, and good luck. Thank you very much.